He was first elected to the Senate in 2002, and during his 20-year tenure, he held several leadership posts, chaired high-profile committees, and championed several big initiatives. Joining me in the studio is Senator David Senjum of Rochester. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. It's just really a pleasure. So I have to start by saying, wow, uh, your career in the Senate is expansive. First off, let's mention the positions you've held. Senate Majority Leader, Senate Minority Leader, Chair of the Senate Capital Investment Committee, Member of the Senate Tax Committee, right now Chair of the Senate Energy Committee. Secondly, you've acted on several very high-profile issues, including the Mayo Destination Medical Center, the Viking Stadium, the Twin Stadium, the largest capital improvements project in history, energy renewal initiatives, and tax policy. That's an incredible resume, isn't it? Uh, it's not bad, I guess. Uh, in the life, life, you know, life passes, you know, the, through your fingers, so to speak, and uh, those, uh, the, the, yeah, those memories are, are are substantial, I guess. When I, when I sit here listening to them, yeah, we've, we've done a lot of good things. When you began your career, you were in the minority party. You eventually rose to the position of majority leader. Reflecting on your career, what attributes are necessary to be effective and to attain the success that you have achieved? Well, Shannon, I think you come up here, uh, this place is all about relationships, it, and, and, and it's, it's not about party lines. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, we, we, we play the party line thing, but, but for anybody that wants to come up here and be successful, forget about the party lines and, and, and establish those relationships. So work, work with people, uh, collect, as I think I said somewhere along the line, the, your, your omies. Uh, you know, you want to collect them and you want to, you know, to, to, to collect them, you have to give them. And, and, and that's all about relationships and that's what this place is all about. And so uh, my advice to anybody would be to, uh, you know, come up here with a purpose. Uh, establish those relationships and, uh, and decide what you're going to do. And, and by the way, then decide what's important to you because you're faced with a lot of things. You, could, you can get yourself wrapped up in, in, in significant things or insignificant things, but stay on the significant things. Uh, speaking of significant things, uh, when the Viking Stadium debate was before the legislature, most of your Senate Republican caucus did not support it. Uh, yet, as majority leader, you brought the issue to the floor. Would you just tell us briefly about that day? Sure. Yeah, it had been about 10 years. Uh, we, we delayed the Viking Stadium uh, uh, through a series of, of legislative sessions. I just thought uh, uh, it's, it's time to vote on this Viking Stadium. And, and by the way, I was personally convinced that the uh, the Vikings, had we not done that, were going to move to Los Angeles. Uh, that wasn't going to happen under my guard. Uh, yeah, I didn't have caucus support. I brought it to the floor anyway. Um, actually gave our caucus an opportunity to elect a new leader uh, uh, for a half an hour, and if they wanted to do that, and if they didn't want our, this, this to be voted on, but uh, they did not elect a new leader. Uh, uh, we came down and voted on it. It passed uh, with 36 votes. Uh, it takes 34 to pass it. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we now have a new stadium. And by the way, we have our Minnesota Vikings and they're not in Los Angeles. <laughs> the right. St. Louis Rams uh, are. They came out of St. Louis into, into Los Angeles. So that could have been our team. Yeah. Uh, when you spearheaded the Mayo Destination Medical Center, you were in the minority. DFLers were in control of the Senate, but you worked to secure funding to improve infrastructure for Mayo's expansion. The DFL leaders that you worked, you, well, you worked with the DFL leaders and they worked with you. I mean, it, it went both ways. And interestingly then, during your fare, farewell speech on the Senate floor, you, you talked about how, you know, leader, or lawmakers used to serve without party affiliation. So with that in mind, what is your future, what is your advice for future legislators? Well, just, you know, in the Destination Medical Center, I worked with Senator Scoy, who was tax chair at the time. Certainly Senator Bach was a minority, uh, majority leader and uh, and we all knew how important this was and, and we, we were able to kind of put the swords down and forget about you know forget about the party stuff and we knew it was important to Minnesota and that was uh, for Mayo to, to stay here and grow here and uh, and uh, everybody had a Mayo story by the way in terms of uh, uh, a, a relative or sister mother daughter didn't matter everybody had seemed to have a story but 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 in terms of of, of the party stuff it just it, 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 yeah, I mean, we, we organize according to parties. We're doing it right now, frankly, in this building. But uh, it doesn't, you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to play your Senate career by parties. You, you just, you come up here and you want to get something done. 
you don't necessarily want to leave a legacy. It, it's not intentional, but but you want to get something done because you know that's that's what you're here for. Uh, you don't want to go home with empty, <laughs> empty, you know, so to speak, an empty pocket. Well, so speaking of getting things yeah. done, uh, we're going to talk now about the Capital Investment Committee. You've served on that panel for several years. You traveled the state. You listened to community leaders about their infrastructure needs. You championed improvements to local water and sewer infrastructure, higher education institutions, roads and bridges. You actually, in that vein, have put a stamp on this state. But what, so, I mean, maybe this one, maybe yeah. something else, what accomplishment gives you the greatest satisfaction for yourself? So, so this is gonna surprise you because we have put hundreds of millions of dollars all over the state of Minnesota in totally worthy projects. The one I'll always remember is the community center in the Phillips neighborhood in South Minneapolis for the kids. Uh, they had nothing. They had a broken down swimming pool, didn't even have support by the city of Minneapolis to fix it, and I said, we're gonna fix this thing. And, uh, and today, and, and these are kids that live, you know, it, it's the drugs, it's the gangs, it's the graffiti, it's, it's, the, it's the prostitution, it's worse than that. I, I don't want to paint that neighborhood as totally bad, but that's what these kids grow up in. And I was, I was convinced uh, that these kids deserve something better than that. And, and we, we built this Phillip Community Center for them. And, and I, I drive by there kind of secretly once in a while, and I, that's, I, I kind of if you will, revel a little bit in pride in terms of the fact that we we're able to do this for these kids. For several years, you've been traveling to Germany to learn about their country's efforts to adopt green energy technology. And we've talked about it a fair amount on this program. From your perspective, where should future legislators focus their efforts as the state attempts to move away from fossil fuels? Well, I think, first of all, you have to decide, uh, or you have to frankly convince yourself that the train is on the track, uh, energy is changing. Uh, we're, we're going to be a clean energy world uh, in the next you know, two or three decades, and then Minnesota's going to have to change with it. So how do we do that then? And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's wind and solar and things we probably don't even know about today. It's a lot of storage, hydrogen's big, but uh, you know, you, you got to wallow into this world, except the fact that uh, this is the direction of, that we're taking. And, uh, and you, you don't have to jump over the cliff in terms of, uh, of, of putting your state at risk economically, or you, know, you don't want to brownouts, blackouts, all that stuff. But you don't have to have that, but you have to progress. And that's all I've tried to do here, just per, you know, move this issue, and uh, hopefully we can move it to continuing frankly, on a county basis. <laughs> well, and so you, you, you perfectly parlay into my next question, because as yeah. we all know, we just had an election. You didn't run for the Senate. Instead, you won your election to become county commissioner of Olmsted County District 2. So congratulations. As we just briefly on that election, were you surprised by the results and the fact that the Senate DFL has regained control of the Minnesota Senate by one vote? Uh, not totally surprised. Uh, redistricting was hard on Senate Republicans this year. It was hard on my district. It was hard on uh, uh, Senator Osmick's district. I mean, we, almost districts impossible for a Republican to win in it. And then, frankly, Senator Chamberlain had an extremely difficult district that uh, that was drawn to that he drew to, and 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 he ran and and he lost. Uh, so we're we're up to we lose three seats to almost to redistricting. Uh, you got to pick up three somewhere else. Uh, uh, we picked up one on the range. We didn't carry the other one, uh, and we lost uh, the Moorhead race, and uh, and we lost the Cottage Grove ra Grove race, and and uh, and so that's where we are today. So I wasn't completely surprised. I just this was very very competitive, very close, and uh, I sat there the other night, uh, understanding that our, our Senate Republican majority depended on three precincts. Uh, up in the, the Ely area, and uh, if they swung our way, we'd be in the majority. If they didn't, uh, we'd be in the minority, even. and they did not swing our way, and so we are where we are today. <laughs> Senator David Senjum, I want to congratulate you on your stellar career. I want to thank you for your time, for coming on this program as often as you have, and wish you all the best. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Always been a pleasure.